every community on YouTube has had some version of infighting before. So let's not act brand new here. However, unlike most, this one you can easily replicate by watching absolutely any episode of South Park. If at any point you want to make the claim that I'm being biased, one-sided, inserting myself into the drama, or just straight up being a bitch, then you should know that I definitely 100% agree with you and I am not above that at all. If you disagree with my opinions, you can go ahead and leave a dislike. It'll be our little secret. continue to rant on please remember not to send anybody mention in this video any type of hate or harassment or bullying leave it in my comment section i love the engagement and if you feel some type of way let me know through the dislikes okay let's get to it i only care about the arguments i don't care about the ad homes i don't care about muddying the water i don't care about putting extra fat I care about proving the main thesis which is this just to be clear so in the beginning your point is so you're not here to exonerate him right no well, I mean, you're trying to prove he's not a pedophile, right? Yes. Okay, so in other words, every single argument that I care about should be in favor of or counter to the point of trying to prove this thesis. Everything else is either a whataboutism or mudding the water or extra and I don't care for it. However, since I know you all are some nosy fucking bitches who loves drama, I will be leaving relevant links and just merely generally referring to these outside kind of dramas to let you know that I know that we, we know, we, we know, but it's not relevant. Feed that drama troll that lives in your basement in my description box. But other than that, we are looking at mostly arguments. Okay, so let's start. This video started off with technicals. We try to save as many people as we can. Sometimes that doesn't mean everybody. But if we can't find a way to live it. Okay, the text in the shortest form possible for the entire reason for the Civil War as it stands at this point right now is a YouTuber named Technicals made a video in order to either exonerate or defend or present a case for or debunk allegations against a Smash player who was cancelled during the Me Too movement known as Zero. Now, it should be stated that everybody involved on every single side agrees that the first half of this video is credible and it does what it sets out to do. In other words, Technicals presents an argument and then shows why that argument is fallacious in some way, shape or form. Either there's new evidence or it was wrong to begin with or it's just not credible and it was well received and we can move on from it, right? So obviously that's not the point. It's not a, the video as a whole, but the most important section and the reason for the Me Too, why everybody was basically upset and why Zero felt that he had to leave the Smash community was in this final section called Katie. Now, Katie is a character presented to us as a 14-year-old minor with screenshotted DMs between themselves and Zero, where Zero at age 19 asked the 14-year-old for, well, yeah. This is just him like calling her adorable and then saying really so I shit. love you react so funny to things mad adorable It's like when you rub a cat's belly and then they just roll around you will not rub my belly. Yeah, why only do that? Is there not okay, where okay. is this right? So do you have the screenshot where they're talking about like the ice cube? There it doesn't exist. So the ice cube stuff just never happened. Nick Are you even listening because I said that earlier in the video? I'm just asking because I, I, you're here right now. So the um, Ice Cube stuff just doesn't exist. Yeah, she said she didn't take pictures of it because she was embarrassed. That's, no, no, that's no, no, her no. explanation. Not, oh, hold on. Does him asking for the Ice Cube exist? Not the actual Ice Cube picture. No. Obviously, you don't have child I'm saying. Porn. It doesn't exist. So essentially, most people would say, um, that five-year age gap with adult and child and CP, all those should be a trifecta for a Me Too cancellation, the likes of which this community should not question ever at all no community on youtube ever not no <laughs> so if he's oh not God. a pedophile and he never got pictures from a minor what's his worst crime being fucking weird with a 14 no, his worst crime is asking for fucking nudes his worst crime is committing a pedophilic action can we agree with that yeah 
Okay. Okay. So everybody should condone it at that point, but to make matters worse, Zero fully confessed. He had a whole ass fucking note, completely confessed that this allegation is entirely true. So he confessed to one of the worst possible things that you could do. So technical defense for this situation is rather to contextualize through psychological means and terms what happened here. So in other words, he's saying that, yes, this really bad thing happened and it was bad and it's objectively bad. However, Zero was actually on the brink of committing suicide. Just because he's in a bad headspace doesn't mean I'm going to ignore that testimony. And it's okay if you want to, and it's okay if a large, I guess it's okay if a large uh, percentage of the Smash community wants to, but like, I'm not sold. <laughs> and that's and my biggest problem with your video. That's fair, you don't have I'm to not be. Sold. You don't have to be. In other words, the confession was delivered under distress and it's therefore invalid. And there is also no actual concrete evidence of CP being shared or sent to anybody. And also KT themselves claimed that they never ended up sending CP. So there was no actual transfer. There's no evidence, basically, there's of it being transferred from one party to the other. And furthermore, there is a psychological explanation of Zero being from Chile, which has a considerably lower age of consent. And then further, he claims that he cannot actually remember these DMs, you know, questioning the validity and credibility of these things. So that's the defense. It's a psychological exploration and contextualization for zero and then technicals this is also important to note ended off his video by saying that the only thing left to say is hashtag welcome back zero so in other words welcoming zero back into content creation as a whole as a platform so that's the first half of the context the second half of the context is the civil war actually started off during an Augie RFC after out in which Nicholas de Oreo prominently and Augie and Bo Blacks and probably the rest of the commentary call-ins were reviewing this video and they were calling complete BS on this argument because essentially they're saying, well, you are using psychological terms in order to excuse and exonerate Zero when in fact he is actually guilty of these things and new evidence have not been produced in order to completely exonerate him. So basically your claim of this being a case closed is not true. This is a cold case, it's unsolved, you have proven nothing here. You market this video as case closed. In my opinion, it's not really a closed case because ultimately how the viewer walks away with their perception of zero depends on whether or not they take his statement uh, where he's admitting to it and then later saying it was a suicide note seriously or not. If they take it seriously, then they're assuming zero is acting in good faith and that nothing bad happened. But if they don't take that explanation seriously, if they're looking at him saying, yeah, everything she said is correct. Yes, I did do those things. Yes, I'm ashamed of it. Yes, don't defend me then this paints a really fucking weird picture here because like this is i mean this is really bad i mean 1914 it's it's undef it's indefensible so that's the fucking problem that that is a massive problem because if you are welcoming somebody back into the community then it should be because you know they've been excused they've been defended they've they've been exonerated something must have changed from like literally a year ago right there should be something new and that just wasn't that obvious in his case I'm not saying the Ice Cube thing didn't happen. Okay. I'm saying the only people who could confirm if it did or didn't happen is them. Okay. Okay. So that's open-ended right, in the so video. Just to be clear, so in the beginning, your point is, so you're not here to exonerate him, right? No. Okay, just, you're not here to exonerate him. The beginning of your section is to just explain kind of the, the basic brushstrokes of what's happening. Then you're moving into um, the emotional baggage that it's like put forward on him. Following that, you're going to um, talk more about like community reception, some things that people have said about him that you don't agree with. And then your overall point in this section is to prove that he's not a pedophile. Well, I mean, you're trying to prove he's not a pedophile, right? Yes. Tech is countering this. The psychological reasonings of him saying that he wanted to commit suicide caused enough doubt on the situation to say that actually there is reason to speculate that this confession is in itself not true. And thus, the civil war started. Now, even though I really want to represent both sides equally, it should be noted that the technical side is much quieter with regards to arguments in the sense that he's um chosen to do the whole my dick is bigger than yours counter argument which makes it very difficult to pinpoint what he actually does think um i did find some let's call them defenders <laughs> who claim to you know speak or criticize on behalf of him and i will be referring to them but there is much more content 
on the other side of this it just is what it is and there's a lot to say so, so yes i am selective in which evidence will count more than others because that's just fucking what it is you are more than welcome to go check it out and make up your own mind essentially this will come down to a moral argument so if you and i have a different moral upbringing or position we will fundamentally disagree and that is fucking okay we're allowed to in fact if this entire entire argument ended up just them on that live stream saying okay we disagree that is it that that was it then we could have lived in peace love and harmony and there would have been no civil war we have to have a dick measuring competition and see who's winning so you know what if you can't beat them join them let's fucking pick a side and just destroy the other side with facts and logic and um, pettiness because we're, we're also here for that we are also here for that now I'm gonna start off with the easiest counter argument. Technicals is presenting this video in a detective style, which is his aesthetic and which is what he's going for. That's perfectly fine. He's allowed to do that, but he's presenting it as case closed, right? How two of the biggest cases in Smash history have never been solved until now. So this is, I mean, this goes beyond false advertising. This is a, since this is a moral position of saying this case is closed, it, it means there is a definitive answer, right? It's not just an open-ended, this is where we began and this is where we are. So what I would just say from that technical point of view, I would say if this, if this was presented in a documentary style, saying this is all the evidence as it occurred, as the events happened, this is the side, you know, so a docu-style type of video, then I think things would have gone much smoother the counter arguments would not have been there because then you didn't conclude by saying you proved something new or you presented something new but instead we are left with the idea that okay we now know the story of zero and we can decide after knowing the story whether you know carol baskin did murder her husband or not that's up to us now the second thing that from this video concerned me was the idea of hashtag welcome back zero which is a problem because that's very very ambiguous and you can use it to say that we have exonerated him or that he has changed or just simply that he's going to start uploading and nobody knows you can literally use this to fuel any single agenda that you want and pretend like we're, we're all on the same level so if the idea as technicals did state that he should not go back to tournaments he should not actually have physical interactions with minors but he can upload again here's the problem with that argument though is he was never banned from uploading ever like he could have always uploaded he just you know cancelled himself he decided not to upload that there was nothing stopping him in the meanwhile also this kt person the, the main victim in the story was not met at a tournament this was a twitch subscriber in other words literally the thing that you want to welcome him back to is the thing that caused problem a the the big thing we met online when you were streaming on twitch and i messaged you over chat so um what does welcome back zero actually mean like <laughs> please explain so technicals strongest argument in this case is that zero now claims that he gave the confession under duress and therefore the confession is false and void the problem is however that this argument relies on the fact that zero is a liar so sure it seems better than being inappropriate with kids but how do we know that he's not doing that now since you framed him literally as a liar also, not having a record for seven years doesn't mean you have any solid proof of not the fact that nothing happened. I mean, there are many people who are totally innocent on record who have absolutely done quote unquote nothing verifiable, but um, a lot of people would think that they might need a record. <laughs> I'm saying the pictures That's don't That's kind exist. of slippery. Yeah, but you're okay, also you're just you're, you're, literally, you're literally trying you're literally trying to catch me on fucking anything right now because you're a fucking you're a demon. All right. What I'm saying mm, okay. is that the right. pictures do not exist, okay? Right. And he cut that off. It didn't. This isn't something that. Oh, a year later, this came out. Okay, yeah, that's pretty, pretty cut and dry, right? Seven years later, there's no new case. He cuts it off himself. Seven years later, there's no new case. What I'm pulling from that is that he either realized it was wrong himself seven years ago, or emotionally he caught up, like internally, and realized this is wrong while he's with Vanessa for five years and then just is a normal fucking person after the fact see like somebody in my chat just wrote like zero's been clean for seven years like clean of what 
Now this argument I kept seeing on Twitter, people kept trying to ratio me about this, it didn't work out for them, it must suck to suck. So here's this fundamental distinction, right, this debate, people kept posting like, oh he changed, he's been rehabilitated, like oh it must be so nice. Okay, here's the fucking problem though, in technicals this video, there is no clear distinction on if the problem is did he actually change and therefore you know he's been rehabilitated or did he do nothing wrong to begin with so in other words that argument is exoneration so if he did change if he did something wrong and now he's been rehabilitated then we need proof and evidence that he had actually changed right so there was a development we went from a to b there was no proof of the development okay if he did nothing wrong to begin with if that's the route you're taking then that means exoneration right which we again need proof or evidence of which was also not provided okay so a lot of people are saying oh but people can change yes they can of course they can that's not in the bed with they can the question is did he change is there proof of him changing well that's not what technicals this video provided he provided arguments as to why the actual confession in itself and the action in itself was not the problem i.e he wasn't wrong to begin with so he wasn't going for the change argument he was for going for the exoneration argument so i'm gonna need proof either way pick pick up pick an adventure tell us which route we're going on and then we can fucking like debate that one but now we're flip-flopping because whenever people say well he didn't change because we don't know then we fall back onto the exoneration argument saying that okay well he was actually not that guilty because you know he only confessed because he was suicidal and then of course when we're saying so that is not a good enough excuse then oh well he did change you know seeing flip-flopping that's a uh, irregularity that is fucking frying my brain just pick a side pick a side already your, your goal is to prove that right, your goal is to prove that G uh, that uh, zero is not a pedophile, right? Yes. So technicals did admit in so many words that what zero did was wrong and pedophilic. We're we're in agreement there. That's like a premise we are both assuming. So then I have the question of why did you spend so much time going into the psychological reasons for why zero did what he did, and not instead spend the majority of that time in the video proving that zero had been rehabilitated or changed? So look, I'm not saying that you can actually prove that, right? I don't think you are necessarily qualified or able to do that. Realistically, the, what I can think of, the only evidence that I would accept at this point is if a psychiatrist who was specifically zero psychiatrist came out and said, I am the psychiatrist, here are literally all the documents, I done did all the tests, and now I know for a fact that he has no bad malicious bone in his body, and you can all rest assured he is not a danger to children. That would literally be what I, um, what I would accept as credible evidence. And yes, it fucking sucks, and yes, that's hard, and yes, it's near impossible to prove, but actions have consequences. Made a video that rely on evidence to prove that the crime in itself was not that bad. While literally saying that he was wrong and you condemn the actions. Like, pick a lane, my dude. Uh, team with all his kids or something and he didn't touch any of them. You can't show me that and have me go, oh, okay, I, yeah, let's let him back. No. Mm -hmm. I think we've generally established within the YouTube and gaming community that if you do something with kids, you don't get a second chance. You just lose that yeah, privilege. People like, keep if saying, he's not offending in the future, that's great, you know. People uh, keep I'm saying, give improved, him a second chance. But I don't agree. He doesn't. He lost his platform as a consequence of his actions, right? Here's my problem with bringing psychological context into the debate completely whatsoever at all. The thing is, is nobody, nobody, nobody that I can at all hear talking about this case at all is qualified to do so. And even if you are qualified to even comment on psychology, you are not zero psychiatrist. You can't evaluate him specifically and tell me for a fact that there is nothing currently wrong with him or what factors actually psychologically played into this event, if we're going to call it that. So if you could do that, if you could like do that, then great, then you would be up to the task of psychologically providing content however you cannot so I mean I don't even think you're qualified but even even if you were even if you were let's do this fucking thought experiment right let's say if somebody drives and they hit a pedestrian and that pedestrian dies does it matter whether the driver was drunk high acting maliciously or just incompetent well, in the absence of proof for which context is relevant here, I literally can only conclude that the pedestrian is dead and that the driver should not be allowed to operate a vehicle. So, um, in other words, actions have consequences, or what I hope we end up calling it, the zero tolerance policy.
Vengeance has consumed you. It's consuming them. So obviously you didn't just click on this video to hear why I specifically think that Technicals' video is fucked up. You also want to know the drama. You want to know why Civil War is happening and how everybody's throwing each other under the bus and who's currently winning. And I, I know, I know, I know. We, we got all the tea. The thing is, is just that I have to make it very clear that almost, almost every single one of the side quests do not actually address the argument at hand. Which is, again, prove that right, your goal is right? to prove that G, uh, that uh, Zero is not a pedophile, right? Yes. Right? So that is every single argument. Before I address it, I need to run through the test of whether or not it addresses that specific goal. And if it doesn't, it's only interesting with regards to drama. And bitch, I know we care about the drama here. I'm not above being petty at all. I am here for it. I'm absolutely. So I will quickly, briefly run over some of those arguments and i will tell you why they don't matter and then i will actually link further external resources for you to go and check out if you're not caught up with the latest episode in the saga so the reason why a lot of people started losing faith in tech was actually some leaked dms between technicals and zero and this was done by technicals accidentally he was on stream and he showed some dms between himself and zero in which it kind of comes off as if zero doesn't care about the victim in question um that they would rather you know lean towards being malicious towards this victim in order to prove that they are innocent and um yeah i mean that shows a lot of character that's been an argument used however does it prove G uh, that uh, zero is not a pedophile right it's a theoretical universe in which one can say that he just maybe is an evil human being that treats others with disrespect and has no regard for possible victims or even optic but saying that he's a sneaky maniac evil human being doesn't actually do anything to prove the, whether or not he's a pedophile it doesn't increase or decrease the argument it does however allow people to feel absolutely no pity in dragging him when they claim that they still think he's guilty like fucking go off queen i'm here for that specific argument 100 percent but our main thesis nope does not address the situation at all all right so it, Nick says, I'll keep making videos in H3, and you keep explaining 15 different ways how Zero's childhood trauma explains why he's listed news from a 14-year-old. Then Nick shows this DM right here. Now, we already talked about this, all right, but we didn't read the bottom part. Also, if you guys keep making shitty arguments like Augie's, I probably won't just ignore them, but I respect your right to do so. On the train of leaking DMs, Nicholas the Oreo also dropped some between Technicals and him. Now, it is up for debate whether or not Technicals used this as the main reason to start firing back. In other words, that he built up rage tension and he just had to get it out and this was just the quickest thing to lean on. But other than that, you can 100% totally disagree and dislike Nick for actually sharing DMs. That's like a choice. Personally, do I think it means absolutely anything? No, it doesn't contribute. It just goes to show that we are all rolling in the mud. Some of us are are liking it more than others make with that what you like this is in regards to the twit longer about my brother yes i was in the group chat here because someone had receipts of him being outrageous also during the time with the whole nsfw art portion of it there was a lot of images being made without anyone's consent because it was a running joke one of the running jokes in the chat that one of the miners drew that they thought was funny was my brother and another one of the members of the chat going at it. It was made in like MS Paint, so it looked like shit. And now there's some serious drama that got posted instead. So Technicals' his brother, he um, he's a questionable figure. Apparently he posted his whole ass fucking dick on a group chat with a bunch of minors as an adult and it's Technicals' twin brother, so um... Technicals, did your brother post his fucking dick in this chat with minors? Yes. Technicals did it about this and he, you know, but it's his brother. It's so it's bad optics But I mean, what can you do? It's your brother. You have to kind of, you know, be on that defense So a lot of people in the commentary community are arguing that this leaked drama This extra drama with his brother is relevant because it shows that the same arguments that Technicals used in order to excuse his brother's behavior He's now using to excuse Zero's behavior as well. So people think that it's relevant. I myself 
I'm taking a very firm stance here and saying that actually it's not relevant. Don't get me wrong, it's it's pretty fucking juicy. <laughs> so please gossip and fight about it. It's fine, we can do this. Please enjoy it. We have fun on the quote tweets. But I don't think that it's relevant to the argument because what this means is that we are psychologically diving into technical position. We're not countering the logic, the arguments, or the facts at this point. We are trying to psychologically contextualize technicals. And I literally just said, as did the entire fucking commentary community, that contextualizing and psychologically analyzing zero is the wrong move. It's not a good argument, not only because we're not qualified to do it properly, but also it really doesn't change jack shit about the argument. So if we're doing that to technicals as well, guess what? You done goofed, you a hypocrite. Okay, look, I'm not directing this towards anybody specifically. That is just my stance. So I don't take it seriously with regards to, again, the thesis in question she, uh, that uh, zero is not a pedophile right but it is some fun ass drama and if you would like to go check that out and read it just look people are trying to discredit technicals because it is coming for the smash community so take that with a grain of salt there's no reason to pile on to this this is obviously a sore spot it's a year old drama and if it was relevant if his brother did say something relevant to the case then i would have allowed it um nobody doxed his brother this was already publicly available that should be said so i don't think it's unethical to use it but i think it's irrelevant and that is just a logical issue for me so in order to counter all of this backlash which inevitably ensued because holy shit that just fucking happened it was ammunition for everybody involved so technicals decided to fire back by posting the actual pictures in question on the timeline so if you are like most functioning rational human beings at this time who have had their eight hours of sleep you saw this shit and immediately decided okay okay bail i'm out bye cheers i am not supporting this dude at all not even from a theoretical standpoint yeah it was it was bad <laughs> i don't know why i decided to do it i think he was probably in a corner and he didn't know how to respond to it so i think maybe his logic here was to show that it was just a crudely drawn ms paint and for obvious reasons i'm not gonna post the actual lollicon on my fucking youtube but here are some reactions to it drop it <laughs> But yeah, personally, um, Lolly on the Timeline was where I drew the line. I was not here for it anymore. A lot of Shadman's fans came over and are now Technicals Brother supporters. So I guess good for him, you know, that's some extra views and subs you didn't have before. The Lolly thing, I think he was just, he felt backed up in a corner. He didn't know what to do, how to react. I think he just needed some sleep at this point, to be completely honest. But again, this doesn't make his argument more or less valid. But not every single Twitter moment was pure AIDS. I mean, obviously right here, he was holding on to that final world to tweet and bragging about sex to an openly incel community. Cool. <laughs> Possibly introducing the worst counter argument that Technicals brought forth. He brought up Zaptai. Yeah, you were trying to save Zaptai, weren't you? Yeah, so but we're open about here? it. You're a little pussy, you won't admit that's what you wanted to do. Yeah, this is widely considered as an unpopular move, and personally, the only way these two situations could be compared in my mind was if CP was involved in any way, shape, or form. So, yeah, I did what any fucking adult would do. I just asked, and yeah, nah, that's an irrelevant counter argument. So we are at the final drama of the saga at the point of me recording this and that is that an old receipt was dug up of Oggy saying that it's totally fine for high schoolers to date if the age gap is 15 to 18. For some reason that is supposed to carry any validity in the debate of whether or not a 14 or a 19 year old means anything in terms of pedophilia. It obviously has absolutely zero to prove or disprove with regards to this argument so um, thank you next. Okay, anybody on our side hiding any shocking and fantastic abilities they'd like to disclose, I'm open to suggestions. So since Technicals didn't decide to actually make a full OS video addressing all the criticisms, which I get, I'm not even judging him for that. There's been so many, some of them are so irrelevant and so besides the point. So I get that. Besides the main arguments that I presented in the beginning of this video, I don't see many other productive kind of counter arguments. However, this led me down the path to find Steve the Leaf, where he presented some counter arguments and most of them are not great, but we're going to go through it. What fun. 
it went from okay we have a problem with his video to well look what his brother did uh fucking five years ago at what like come on dude stick to the fucking thing at hand here so his main problem here is actually the arguments itself are not being employed or used or countered but instead you know smear tactics are employed bringing in his brother like screenshotting the lolicon and i'm i actually yeah i i'm in agreement here i do think all these side adventures are entertaining as all hell but they're not resolving anything and they're actually further muddying the water we are not getting anywhere we're not addressing again the main question of whether or not zero is still a bit or still or ever has been a pedo I don't want to say he's not all there, but he's not, he's not, he's not smart. I'll just say it like that. He's not smart. Okay. So if he thought he could like reincarnate himself and come back like as a better person and all this other stuff. It was really, really sus. Um, <laughs> okay. So I guess his argument here is that zero is dumb. So like, what the fuck does that mean? Does someone preach you his food or wipe his ass? Is your point that he's too dumb to be around children? Cause then, yeah, he probably should also not be around children. Then I guess you agree with the commentary community. The, everything I read was not sex to a minor, okay? Um, I saw two teenagers fucking flirting with each other awkwardly like I did with the Call Me Carson shit. And you, grant, granted, the Call Me Carson shit was fucking two, two year age gap, this would be a five year age gap. I don't see much difference from the pyro shit. Pyro, fucking, oh man, <laughs> he said some crazy shit to minors. And he was like, well, I didn't know. So it exonerates me. Is when she mentions the age, when she mentions he's 14, he doesn't acknowledge that that's a problem. A lot of these fucking predators would be like, well, you know, you better keep this, you better keep this under wraps because I'm getting a lot of trouble for this. The only thing that could even apply that, which is like way later, probably possibly days or weeks later, was like, oh, you're my little secret because he was laughing and blushing um, and no one knew what he was laughing and blushing about. Okay, so he's bringing up the examples of Call Me Carson, who literally a two year age gap, or Pyro, who was catfished, and he says that blushing doesn't count as recognition of guilt because he could have been blushing at just about anything. So you're literally explaining yourself why these cases are different, like you're literally listing and pinpointing the exact accusation and the exception. Like, if somebody was this, I, I don't want to use Zero as an example, because again, I'm trying to articulate that I don't think Zero is a pedophile. I'm just telling you that, like, if somebody was this... I, I, I don't want to use Zero as an example, because again, I'm trying to articulate that I don't think Zero is a pedophile. Alright, so if you don't think he's a pedophile, what is the problem with, like, welcoming him back to the internet? Not fucking the Smash community. I, you could argue the Smash community. Um, it doesn't seem like that to me. Uh, he's not going to tournaments, he's not doing anything. So right here he's showing a video of where, uh, technicals clipping Nick where he's basically saying that he doesn't think that right now that Zero is a pedo. Right, okay. The problem with using this as so-called evidence is that that is not an exoneration of Zero at all whatsoever. That is absolutely 0% evidence. Even if I myself think that he's currently not a danger to children, I think that he's more of a danger to children than 0%. Like, than absolutely nothingness. And if it's more than absolute nothingness, then it's too much considering what is at stake, which is children, like actual literal children could be harmed. If there is more than a 10% chance that you could be a danger to children, then that is enough for me to be more concerned than 0%. You get what I'm saying? He did not exonerate him. He did not prove that he changed. He did not do any of those necessary steps in order for somebody to be reintroduced into society as they would in any kind of criminal justice system. So what are what are we proving here? What are we proving here? Like having a suspicion about somebody being a good or a bad person does absolutely zero in order to prove that they are in fact a good or a bad person. This is not evidence, this is clipping somebody in order to, I don't know, like run Twitter victory laps. Yeah, I'm sure the likes are worth it. People who have been accused of similar things and have used these types of defenses to defend themselves, and it's like shat on instantly. But when it's used for zero, suddenly it's like, oh, this is a valid defense. Like, I, I'm sorry, I don't see it that way. I you guess know, I would need, like, if an this, example, if, because, if like, zero the way I had, see it if is, zero had is, legitimately done this stuff, and again, we don't know, but if zero had legitimately done this stuff, there's no defense of it. It's just wrong. 
period. I, the difference to me is like, if you look, I'm going to use Mini Lad as an example. Mini Lad threatens suicide to these chicks to be like, you cannot really say. Yeah, anything. I'm not talking about um, someone who he's using his mental health or stuff like that against them. I'm talking about people who use it as a defense of themselves. And I'm sorry, I know you said you wanted an example. A good example of this would be um, Kiwis. When Kiwis was defending himself, he went instantly went to, oh, my mental health was poor, so I made a bad decision. And everybody was like, that's bullshit, dude. You can't use your mental health did to justify what you did. make an attempt at suicide? Sorry, I'm not the, the difference between an excuse and an explanation is like an excuse for Red Kiwis. If he didn't actually try to kill himself, and he's saying, oh, But you're hinging on killing I'm... yourself, and that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the people that use past self-harm or my suicidal thoughts. So this was the first time, and... True. I did try to end my life at the beginning of 2017. Um, I'm not looking for sympathy. I'm not looking for anything. This is not what this is about. This is telling you guys the reason. And I just want you to understand the headspace. I prove my innocence. This really took a toll on my mental health. I was suicidal, I was depressed, and I was just overall broken. If somebody's harming children or animals or anybody actually, then that would necessarily mean that you have something wrong in the mental faculties department of your body. Like, you are not harming people because, just because, right? Something has to automatically be wrong. So using mental health or mental instability as an excuse as to why you're harming people makes absolutely no sense because that's already implied. That's the, the, that is the reason why. But the reason why this argument is bad is because if somebody's mental health is the reason why they have no control over causing harm to others, then you are saying that they need to be locked up and sent away because they have no control over their own actions and thoughts. If that is what you truly believe, then you yourself believe that he should not come back to any kind of area where he would have to make any kind of decisions or actions by and for himself. The same with everybody else with, with mental illness this severe. Think that if you lack the capacity to do certain things or to be certain places because you get quote unquote triggered, then then you should maybe not be in those places, times or things. So yeah, if he's saying that mental health is the reason why zero preyed upon a child, then okay, then we agree that he's a danger to children. The, the conclusion is the same. Uh. <laughs> Does anyone have any orange slices? So contrary to popular belief, I'm not totally blackpilled on tech yet. I actually have a solution. So since Elvis the alien has spoken out against Augie and is clearly taking the side of technicals here, I think the two of them should just start a podcast. Call it cold wet ice cubes. Ice, ice yes, babe. I know. See, the two of them actually have quite a lot in common. Both of them, like, hate Zaptai. Both of them also don't like the commentary community. And they can appeal to the Shadman apologists. Yes, and to make things even more poetic, Elvis can actually blatantly answer one of Technical's most pressing and iconic questions. Six, what is a six letter word that would go after grape juice drinking? <laughs> PewDiePie Nick. So it might feel a bit different about, you know, false allegations, but other than that, I think this is a winning solution. And now, a heartwarming coping montage from the commentary community. Take it away, boys. If I made the video, I wouldn't have put the left statement. If you made the video, the you would have just read tweets the entire time. Okay. okay. Holy okay. shit, okay. dude. Jesus. Yeah, I'm trying to Christ. defend you. What? Hey, I'm not going to explain. Explain. That's a fucking I retarded think, argument. I, I, think I have no idea how I would do it, Flamenco, because well, I didn't say you a 14 year old girl. Right? So it's not my problem, problem to do that. Out. How the fuck is he doing it? It's you that have to figure it out. He has to show the community. Okay. You can't keep Tom Lewis excusing it. Have you ever been on fucking Twitter before? Holy shit, dude. Literally the whole fucking chat is excusing it. The entire oh, chat. Uh, all of all of the people watching Dira's video. No, there's like all these fucking people in the chat who are sitting reception. here being like, "Oh, oh he's saying, Soggy, he fucking changed." All right, he's right. different now. It question. was five years ago. He was from Chile. Okay, the Asian can sit there is fucking ten. Okay, it's okay. No, no, I wanna, it's not. I, okay. I want to take. <laughs> I want to. <laughs> like I always love to say, I'm just a thought with an opinion, and I don't know shit about fuck. Peace.